Welcome class to the midpoint and descent formulas lecture. This is section three of our book. Midpoint. It's going to be the point in the middle of a segment. We're only going to be dealing with segments when we talk about midpoints. And of course, like it sounds, midpoint. Middle point. It just divides it into two congruent segments. So a midpoint, if you know something's a midpoint, you know that the other two segments that have the endpoint of M or the midpoint will be congruent. So in the diagram down here, segment AM and segment MB are going to be congruent because M is a midpoint. A segment bisector is any shape that goes through the midpoint. It's also any shape that divides the segment exactly into two congruent segments. It goes right through the middle of a segment. So, segment AB is bisected by line CD. That's because line CD here goes through point M, the midpoint of segment AB. Please note, one way that, that we denote something as congruent is we put a tally mark. So, for instance, segment AM and segment MB are now labeled as congruent because they actually have the tally mark. I don't actually have to say it. It's drawn in the diagram. For example 1 and example 2, they use the same letters, but I did denote that these two segments up here are congruent, and these two down here are congruent, but there's nothing guaranteeing that the segment here is congruent to the segment here. A different number of tallies means it's congruent to something else. If I know that M is the midpoint of segment AB, for example 1, and I know that the length of segment AM is 25, they want me to find the measurement of length of segment BM and length of segment AB. Well, length of segment MB is congruent to length of... That was entirely wrong. I hope some of you caught that. If I said length of segment BM, that's a number. So I should have said is equal to length of segment AM. Because I knew M was a midpoint, I could say that segment AM is congruent to segment MB. And then once I know those two segments are congruent, I can now say those two lengths are equal. And at this point, I just plug in what I know. I know length of segment AM is 25. That also means length of segment MB is 25. And that is one of my answers. Now, to find the length of segment AB, I'm just going to use the segment addition postulate. Length of segment AM plus length of segment BM equals length of segment AB, written as such. Plug in what I know, and then simplify those are my two answers for example one. Example two is going to be a little bit more difficult. For this one, when I look at this, it says if length of segment AM is 2x minus 5 and length of segment MB is x plus 3, they want me to just find the length of segment AB. If I just use the segment addition postulate though, I'm going to have an x left over. I have to somehow figure out what x is, and then I can tell you what the length of segment AB is. Just to show you just plugging in the numbers won't work, I have decided to do the segment addition postulate first. I'm now going to plug in what I know about both length of segment AM and length of segment B MB. Anytime you substitute in something more than a number, you really should include parentheses around what you substitute in, just so that way if it is being multiplied, you can remember to distribute. In this case, that's not necessary, so let's just get rid of the parentheses right away. At this point, combine like terms, and I look. If I know x, I can plug it in, get a, b, 1, 2, 3. However, I don't know x. Let's use this idea that m is a midpoint, which means segment a, m, and segment m, b are congruent, which also means their lengths are equal. So over here, Length of segment AM equals length of segment MB. Plug in what I know about both of them. 2x minus 5 equals x plus 3. Solve for x. First thing, let's get all the x's on one side, so let's subtract x from both sides. 2x minus x is x. That minus 5 just takes along. x minus x is 0, and 0 plus 3 is just 3. At this point, all the x's are on one side, get x by itself, add 5 to both sides, I get x equals 8. Now that I know x is 8, I'm going to go back over here, plug it in for my length of segment a, b. 3 times 8, 24, minus 2, 22. 
length of segment AB is 22. To find the midpoint when you're given two coordinates, all you do is plug it into that bottom equation down here. This M, which stands for the midpoint, that's why you use the capital letter M to label the midpoint. And then it's going to be x1 plus x2 over 2 for the x-coordinate of that point, where x1 is the x-coordinate of A and x2 is the x-coordinate of B. Comma, y1 plus y2 divided by 2, and this will be the y-coordinate of my midpoint, which is y1 plus y2. If I was just given two points and asked to find their midpoint, I would just plug it into this formula and that would be halfway between the two. You can also think of it as halfway between the two numbers that I have. Up here, the midpoint formula is right there. It says when A is x1, y1, and B is x2, y2. If I gave you two points, E is 5, 8, and F is 107, 10. Finding the number halfway between 8 and 10 isn't going to be that hard. If I was just going to go and find halfway between by counting, well, if I started at nine, 8 and 10 and went one number inward, I'd arrive at 9 at the same time. So the y coordinate of my midpoint is 9. The other way is just plugging it in to my formula. If it's easy enough to just find halfway through, halfway between, you probably could just find halfway between without using the formula. However, when it gets more difficult like this, you have to use the formula. It doesn't matter which one I choose as x1 and y1, I just have to be consistent. So I'm going to choose e to be x1, y1, and f to be x2, y2. I wrote it in just to be safe, so that way I won't get confused later and forget. Now I just simplify my midpoint. 5 plus 107 is 112. 8 plus 10 is 18. And 112 divided by 2 is going to be 56. 18 divided by 2 is 9. So the midpoint of these two would be 56, 9. If you took 56 minus 5, you get 51. And if you took 107 minus 56, you would get 51. It is halfway between, which means it's the same distance from both x coordinates. Same thing with the y. If I was to take 9 minus 8, it's 1. And 10 minus 9, it's 1. It's both the same distance away from its endpoints. That's what a midpoint is, halfway between. For example, three, they want us to find the coordinates of the midpoint, and they gave us a graph. I know it doesn't directly say it, but we really should graph segment A, B, and just kind of actually see if the midpoint formula hits the midpoint, or what looks like the midpoint to our eyes. So first things first, A is 1, 2. Right here. Remember, whenever you graph, you always label with a point and the coordinates of it. And then the next one is 5, negative 4. So 5 is the x-coordinate, you go along this here, and then negative 4, you go down to here. So these are my two points, and at this time, I would draw a segment from these two, and just by oddballing it, I bet my midpoint is going to be right there. We'll see. Now let's enter it into the midpoint formula. Remember that's x1 plus x2 over, sorry, comma, y1 plus y2 over 2. So I'm going to choose a to be x1 and y1. So I'm just going to plug those in real quick. 1 and 2. And then I'm going to plug in the, uh, the second coordinate one. So 5 is x2, negative 4 is y2, so 1 plus 5 is 6, 2 plus negative 4 is negative 2, 6 divided by 2 is 3, negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1, so the coordinates of my midpoint is 3 comma negative 1, 1, 2, 3 comma negative 1, even that eyeball test was pretty good, m is 3 comma negative 1. There we have it. That's finding the midpoint. Honestly, you probably could have done this without doing the midpoint formula. You could have just asked yourself, what's halfway between 1 and 5? What's halfway between 2 and negative 4? One way to always find a number halfway between is add up two numbers and divide by 2. That's the halfway point. So the halfway between 5 and 7, 5 plus 7 is 12. 12 divided by 2 is 6. And 6 is halfway between 5 and 7. This works for really large numbers too. That's why the midpoint formula 
works so efficiently. It finds the number halfway between, like that. Example 4 here. It says find the coordinates of the endpoint C of segment CD. The midpoint of segment CD is N, 1, 4, and the endpoint D is 3, 5. Well, this one's kind of backwards. It's now asking me for the endpoint instead of the midpoint. However, I'm given the midpoint, so I'm still going to end up using the midpoint formula. However, in this case, I already know my midpoint. My midpoint is N is 1, 4. My endpoint is D, 3, 5. C, I don't know, but I'm going to call it x1, y1. If I look here, I'm going to use my endpoints and plug it into my midpoint formula. Using points C and D, I have plugged it into my midpoint formula. So for instance, x1 went here, x2 was 3. y1 went here, y2 was 5. I've now plugged it in. I know what it already has to be. The answer of this has to be the same as 1, 4. So that means when I take x1 plus 3 divided by 2, I need to get 1. And when I take y1 plus 5 divided by 2, I need to get 4. At this point, I really have two different problems I have to do. x1 plus 3 divided by 2 equals 1. And y1 plus 5 divided by 2 equals 4. Again, I'm just matching up the x coordinate here to this one, the y coordinate to this coordinate. I already know what my midpoint is, so I already knew the result of the midpoint formula. It's good because otherwise I want to be able to find that endpoint. To solve here, I have to do the opposite. The furthest thing away is divided by 2, so I have to multiply both sides by 2. I will get x plus x1 plus 3 equals 2. Because when I multiply by 2, this crosses out. When I multiply by 2 here, 1 times 2 is 2. At this point, subtract 3 from both sides. x1 is negative 1. Do the same thing over here. Multiply 2 to both sides first. This will cancel out. I will end up with y1 plus 5 equals 8. Subtract 5 from both sides. I get y1 equals 3. My coordinate for c is going to be negative 1, 3. At some point, we're going to want to find the length between two points. If we know its coordinates, we can always find its length using this formula. Nothing fancy, just plugging it in again. Making sure that we are consistent with a being x1, y1, and b being x2, y2. Consistency is key here. Let's try this for a trivial case. For instance, let's just stay along the number line. We're going to use the points e and f. Just to be consistent here, we're going to use a horizontal line, something that has the same y coordinate. I chose e being 0, 5, and f being 4, 5. I'm just going to choose E to be x1, y1, and F to be x2, y2. I wrote it in there just so that way I, I won't forget. And now I just plug it in. Instead of using the length of segment AB, I'm going to use the word or phrase length of segment EF, written as such. And from the rest, I'm just going to plug it into its corresponding part, x1 and 0 here. When I plug them all in, this is what I get. And at this point, now it's just simplifying. Do the subtraction inside the parentheses first, and then square, and then add together. 4 minus 0 is 4 squared, plus 5 minus 5 is 0 squared. This part's going to drop off because 0 squared is just 0, and plus 0, it's gone. So square 4, you get 16. And square root 4, 16, you're going to get 4. And that is the length between the two. And remember, it is a horizontal line, so just using the ruler, 4 minus 0 is 4. Yep. That, it's no surprise to me that we get this length. For example, 5, they are just again asking us to do this problem, but instead they're using different points. So if A com is 1, 2, and B is negative 3, negative 1, make sure you plug it in correctly. Uh, I'm going to choose A to be x1, y1, and B to be x2, y2. So the length of segment AB is 5, and we found this using the distance formula. At this point, you should be able to use the midpoint to find either the midpoint or an endpoint on a segment. And you should also be able to use the distance formula to find the length of a segment. Till next time.